Hello friends and welcome to another lecture on chemical engineering thermodynamics. Today we will look into a question that has come in Mumbai University on December 2019. The question is 2A and it is on your screen. Derive the Gibbs Duhem equation. The activity coefficient for a non-ideal binary mixture is given by the equation ln gamma 1 is equal to x2 square 0 0.5 plus 2x1 and ln gamma 2 is equal to x1 square 1.5 minus 2x2. Check if these equations satisfy the Gibbs Duhem equation. Marks 12 marks. Now for 12 marks this problem or this question is something which is really worth giving a try, giving a shot and doing it correctly. That's the important thing. So first is deriving the Gibbs Duhem equation. Now this is something which I found that students find it really sometimes very tough to derive the Gibbs Duhem equation and they beat around the bush. So I'll give a very direct answer on how we should be deriving the Gibbs Duhem equation. Okay. So before we go into it, uh, please like and subscribe my channel. This is very important to me. I have only 652 subscribers and uh, it has to be at least minimum 1000 subscribers to make this project worthwhile. Okay, so let's get ahead. Now, how do you find the Gibbs energy? Uh, what you say as Gibbs Duhem equation? Okay, now in thermodynamics, we normally say that any state property, okay, this is a state function that is G is a state function can be expressed as a function of two variables that is temperature and pressure. So this is what I have written down. G is a function of that is Gibbs free energy is a function of temperature and pressure. Now coming to the second equation, how do we really get it? That is I have written now dG as is equal to minus S dt plus V dP. So it is a function of temperature and pressure. But how do we get minus S and V? That is the whole question now. So for this, we have to look at the problem this way that uh, okay so for the closed system the first law can be written as du is equal to dq minus pdv now this is one equation which i think god knows you know all students from 12th standard 11th standard and all the standards should be really knowing it that the change in internal energy is equal to the heat given to the closed system and plus the work done by the closed system. Now to this equation, what do we do is on both sides, we add dPV first. So when we add dPV first on both the sides, what we get is dH because U plus PV is equal to H. That is enthalpy is nothing but internal energy plus pressure into volume. So dH is going to be dQ, so minus PdV plus dPv. So what are we going to get here now? We Now we are going to get is equal to dQ plus V dP, right? So now to this equation, again on both the sides, we add dTs, okay? So we are going to get dH minus that is we subtract dts from both the sides dts is going to be equal to dq minus dts plus v into dp right now the entropy of any fluid is given by ds is equal to dq by t. Therefore, what do we get here? dh minus d into ts is equal to, now we replace dq here, so it's going to be t into ds minus d into ts plus v into dp. And finally, we get this equation as dg is equal to noting down and subtracting the common terms in this, we get minus S dt plus V dp. Okay. So, this doesn't require any lot of 
thinking to write, we can uh, write it down from memory too, but this is the formal derivation of it from the first law. Okay. Now, if we take a multi component system, then Gibbs free energy can be written as a function of temperature, pressure, and the masses of individual components. And if we differentiate it, we can write it down as dg is equal to minus s dt plus v dp plus summation of dou g by dou ni nj constant d ni, right? So, because now what we do is we do the differential with respect to t, then we do the differential with respect to p, and third time we do the differential with respect to individual components. So, when we add, then we add it up for all the individual components. Now, at constant temperature and pressure, the first two terms will cancel off, okay? And we will get dg is equal to dou ng by dou ni holding ng constant d ni. The excess Gibbs free energy of a liquid mixture dou ng by dou rt, okay? Now, we just replace dou nge by dou rt in this and we get it this way. The excess Gibbs free energy on the left side can be written this way as summation of dou nge by dou rt dou ni dni. Now, this is where we need to remember a few things that this definition dou nge by dou rt dou nge by rt by dou ni holding nj constant is defined as the activity coefficient of any component i in a liquid, okay? And therefore, from there, that definition, we get this d n g e by r t, okay? Now, what we do here is, in this equation, we write this as ln gamma i, and this is d n i, which comes from here, and we divide it by n, right? So, we can write it as this equation, d n d g e by r t, summation of ln gamma i d x i, because d n i by n is going to be nothing but d x i, right? So, <clears throat> also by definition, the excess Gibbs free energy of the mixture can be written as summation of the mole fractions multiplied by the partial Gibbs free energy, okay? So, dou n g e by r t over dou n i and this is nothing but ln gamma i. So, this is going to be summation of, okay, what we get here is the summation of x i into ln gamma i. Now, if we differentiate this equation, we are going to get it this way. That is first time we differentiate it with respect to x and the second time we differentiate it with respect to d ln i, okay, or ln gamma i. Now, we have equation number 1 here and we have equation number 2 here, okay? Now, it's very evident. If I replace equation number 1 in equation number 2, I am going to get this as this equation that is nothing but summation of x i d ln i d ln gamma i is equal to 0. Now, this is the Gibbs Duhem equation, right? Now, this equation has a very good importance in um, uh, chemical engineering thermodynamics. It allows you to find out that the model that you have written for ln gamma i, does it really model the system correctly? Now, if it does not satisfy the Gibbs Duhem equation, okay, the differential xi summation should be equal to 0. If the model is written incorrectly, mathematically if you write it incorrectly, you come to a wrong conclusion or you write the equation in a wrong way, it will never satisfy the Gibbs Duhem equation, okay? So, the first criteria for any model of liquid activity is that it should satisfy the Gibbs Duhem equation. That is the most important criteria. If it does not satisfy, it means the model written for it is wrong. Mathematically, you have come to a wrong conclusion. 
Now for a binary mixture we can obviously divide this equation by dxi and we can write it this way as it is written in equation number 4. Now differentiating ln gamma 1 and ln gamma 2 with dx1 with respect to dx1 and multiplying it with x1 and x2 that is d ln gamma 1 by dx1 we place it here replace it here and d ln gamma 2 by dx1 we substitute it here so we get this okay that is 2 x1 square x2 square minus 2 x1 square x2 square and this of course the sum of this is equal to 0. Therefore, the equation satisfies gives you him equation. So, if the equation satisfies gives you him actually mathematically if you go to see it is the right equation to satisfy the activity coefficients okay to describe the activity coefficients of the fluid. But one needs to also realize here that the mathematics may be right but it may not fully describe the points. Sometimes what happens is mathematically the equation may be right but it may not represent the fluid in the entire range of the temperature and pressure. It may only represent it correctly in a limited range of the temperature and pressure for which the VLE data is taken. So, this is very important. Okay. Now, if it satisfies gibbs duhem equation means thermodynamically it is a consistent equation. You call it these such equations as consistent equations. That is mathematically they are consistent. But they may not exactly define the activity coefficient in the entire temperature and pressure range because the equation must have been contrived from a very limited data, VLE data of for a very limited range of temperature and pressure. So, it may not really be defining it for the entire temperature and pressure or we may not be able to actually extrapolate. In correct words, we may not be able to extrapolate it beyond the temperature and pressure range for which it is written. This is important to understand. Okay. So, this was all about deriving the gibbs duhem equation and for 12 marks, well, this is a fairly simple problem and the model given was also a fairly simple one where one could really differentiate it simply and come to the conclusion. Okay, so this is Professor Arvind Prasad and thanks for listening to this lecture. Once again, do subscribe to my lectures, do subscribe to my channel and if you find that these are useful, send it to students who might find it useful and ask them to subscribe it. Okay guys, that was all about chemical engineering thermodynamics gibbs duhem equation. Keep watching. There will be another lecture. Goodbye.